Hey everybody, so today we have a special guest who's going to be joining us. Her name is Heather Hedden and she has been working in the taxonomy field for quite some time and is a pretty known expert since she does also have a book on this topic. So if you haven't checked that out, I would strongly recommend doing so. Okay, so she is going to be talking today about the differences between uh, classification and taxonomies. Now they can get intermixed a little bit. They do have specific uses for each one. But what I would also say, keep in mind when you're watching this, any classification systems are a really good starting point to understand what your top level categories might look like for any taxonomy or even an e-commerce site. If you're looking for what you know departments or, or top level things that you want to have on your site, or even on SharePoint, for instance, if you're doing that um, same application. So with that, let's go check out what Heather has to say. Hello, my name is Heather Hedden, and I'm a taxonomist. I design and create taxonomies. I write a blog called The Accidental Taxonomist, and Ashley suggested that I take one of the topics from that blog that has been popular. A recent one is on a comparison of classification systems and taxonomies. The classification systems are pretty basic. And in fact, when many people think of taxonomies, they think of classification systems, since they are hierarchical structures of topics. These could be library classification systems, such as the Dewey Decimal System, or industrial classification systems, and there are many others as well. Here are some examples of classification systems. Uh, this one is the Dewey Decimal System that is used to classify library materials. So it's probably something many of us are familiar with from public libraries. Then there is the Library of Congress classification system that's used mostly in academic libraries. Classification systems have been developed uh, in many specific subject areas, uh, especially by professional associations. This, the American Psychological Association, has a classification categories and codes uh, originally designed for its literature, but may be used by others as well. These are their classification codes. There is also a larger uh, taxonomy or thesaurus as well, not just this list of codes. The American Economic Association also has a classification system uh, that was uh, developed for its Journal of Economic Literature, JEL. It has uh, conveniently 26 <laughs> top levels, one for each letter of the alphabet. And then you can go into one, for example, International Economics, and you see there are more uh, specific uh, categories. There are other uses of classification systems. The United States State's Patent and Trademark Office has an extensive classification system to classify inventions. This is really quite long. <laughs> and if we go uh, each one of these, let's say bridges, then has even uh, a, a next level of, of numbering system to get more specific. And then a classification system that is more common is the North American Industrial Classification System, NAICS. Uh, this is the top level of these uh, numeric codes. And if we go into one, oh, I like information, we can see uh, the more specific codes. Let's look at uh, one of these classification systems in more detail. Here again is the Dewey Decimal System, just uh, blown up a little bit so you can see the top levels a little more clearly. Here, an example, a category called unassigned. That's interesting. I wonder what it will be assigned to. And certain groupings that I'm not sure if I agree with, philosophy and psychology, because I thought psychology was a social science, which we have down here. And then if you looked at this in any detail, you can see that there's really quite a bias, a Western bias here where almost all of religion is on Christianity and almost all of language and literature is a few select Western European languages. Then there are categories for other, 
And it's hard to know whether something will be found in other or not. Sometimes we see categories like medicine and health. I think that is at least as important as philosophy and psychology. Shouldn't that be at the top level? But no. And then other just classifications that I don't think make a lot of sense, such as management and public relations as technology. I would think it goes with business. And I don't even know where business is, although we have commerce up there under social sciences. So let's now take a more closer look on the comparison of classification systems and taxonomies. Well, the obvious is that classification systems have alphanumeric codes and taxonomies do not. Uh, taxonomies often have uh, ident unique uh, identifiers on terms, but that's something different. That's not displayed to the end user as codes are. It's just a way of managing the terms so that they are unique. Classification systems uh, are intended to be comprehensive and give a balanced coverage of a domain. Uh, that's why it's, uh, they kind of divide up everything into, into the categories. Whereas taxonomies take a different approach. It's a collection of terms that are needed, just the terms that are needed. And so when it's arranged in a hierarchy, that hierarchy could be unbalanced. Classification systems are designed to be browsed hierarchically, top down. That's the only way. Whereas taxonomies can be accessed different ways. They can be browsed hierarchically or they can be searched. Often a user will type in uh, into a search box, which will then match against terms in the taxonomy. They could be displayed in a type ahead or search suggest. So the taxonomy might not be fully displayed to the end users. Classification systems do provide for some expansion, limited expansion. Remember that category unassigned, and we can always throw some things into other. Whereas taxonomies, without that rigid alphanumeric system, we can always add more terms. And so taxonomies can grow and adapt without limits. As we saw, classification systems tend to have a not elsewhere classified or other category, and taxonomies don't. Taxonomy, taxonomies comprise terms that are useful, not something for miscellaneous. Classification systems don't usually have synonyms, which might be called alternative labels or variants or non-preferred terms. And the reason why is because they are intended to be browsed hierarchically only, not searched, whereas taxonomies, especially if they are large, would be searched. And so those synonyms or alternative labels are very useful in redirecting the user to the proper term. Classification systems are built for a subject domain or even a broad, all, all of knowledge if it's for a library, but somewhat independent of specific content. It's like it, it can be used for any books, <laughs> whereas taxonomies tend to be custom built for a specific uh, set of content and specific users uh, to include the topics and content to be tagged. Finally, an observation, uh, we've seen that classifications are often academic or they have a subject specialized focus. Uh, exception would be a product catalog um, classification system. Classification systems can be very useful for very extensive uh, types of uh, detail, uh, specific products. Whereas taxonomies tend to be more business need focused. So let's look again uh, at a specific example comparison. Returning back to the NAICS codes, while it's nice to have a standard system, this is not useful in all cases. Uh, I mean, even just looking at here, hunting, I mean, I don't even think that's an industry, right? Isn't it kind of recreation? And there's some important industries that are not really at the top level. So let's compare this with some actual industry-related taxonomies. Okay, here's one. I mean, it's pretty small, uh, but it was actually a, an industry facet of a faceted taxonomy for legal articles. So these are uh, the industries that are most important for legal, legal articles. I've, I've highlighted here pharmaceutical and biotechnology, which does not make its way to the top of the NICE codes, but it's a very important industry when it comes to legal issues. This example is from the, in, the International Labor Organization, which takes a point of view of the workers. 
So what industries and sectors do workers worldwide uh, work in? So it's a little bit different, quite a bit different actually than from the organization of NAICS. Then we often see industries or maybe more where I shall say businesses in yellow pages types of directories. This is just the top level of one that has a second level. So it's really a classification of businesses that sell to consumers. If that's what you need, then you definitely you would not refer to NAICS codes. And my final example here is uh, taxonomy of industries, at least the top two levels, from a management consulting firm of the various industries that it does consulting into. And so it really reflects what's important for their business. So just some final points here. So when would you create a classification system? Actually, I think it's really quite rare because many of them already exist. So it's really, I think, the product catalog type of situation. Uh, what you more likely would create is a, your own taxonomy. So if they already exist, when would you use one? Well, first of all, the classification system has to exist that covers the scope and depth of your content very well. Not, uh, it should be detailed enough and not cover other areas. Also, your users should be subject matter experts that are familiar with the classification system and expect it and want to use it. For example, uh, several years ago, I did a consulting project that involved the World Bank. And while we were developing a taxonomy, they also were using those JEL codes because most of them were economists and they were very familiar with them. Which brings us to our final point is that a classification system often supplements a taxonomy or thesaurus. Many library research uh, databases have their own thesauri or other controlled vocabularies, but they also might use the NAICS codes uh, for anything related to industry because um, that, that's considered standard and those who want to use it. So I hope I've given you a good comparison, classification systems and taxonomies. What I found is that if you sometimes leave the design of taxonomies to subject matter experts, they may tend to want to design something that resembles a classification system, even if it doesn't have the codes, because they know their subject area and they feel they want to describe it thoroughly. They might not be thinking about what the user needs, whereas taxonomists and information architects take into consideration the content strategy, the use cases and what the users need to find in the content and then de de develop a more useful taxonomy. So I hope this can get you started and thank you for your attention. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Heather is a very well-known voice in the taxonomy space. And, you know, we are going to try to have some, you know, more friendly faces on the channel since there's a lot of really strong voices in this space. All right, so with that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll check you out next time.